Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, CARSI Quick Byte tutorial. In other videos in this series, we've used the PBS Torque and MAUI scheduler to interact with the scheduler to get our computations running on compute nodes. In this video, I'm going to show you a different scheduler called SLURM. SLURM is a more modern scheduler, and we're moving our clusters to SLURM. So in the future, whatever cluster you're running on will probably be using SLURM. But not to worry, uh, we're setting up Slurm so that it's backwards compatible with the PBS commands you've already learned. So you'll be able to put those into your Slurm batch scripts and use them um, to interact with the Slurm scheduler. But there are some commands that will only be available through Slurm, such as allocating GPUs. So I wanna make sure that we cover that in this tutorial. And also if you're just starting out and haven't used PBS, you might want to use Slurm and learn Slurm um, so that you can have a more modern scheduler that you're interacting with. All right, so let's go ahead and log into Xena. Xena is one of the clusters currently that has Slurm installed. Our larger cluster, Wheeler, um, we're transitioning to Slurm at the end of 2021. And our future uh, clusters will all be uh, using Slurm in the future. So as usual, we need a test program to use as an example when we're running our Slurm script. We're going to use the same program that we wrote in a previous video called CalcPy. If you're curious what that program does, you can take a look at that video. To download it, we're just going to type git clone https lobo git .unm .edu slash parsi slash workshops dot git. That downloads the programs. Now we can CD into the workshop, workshops directory. Um, by the way, I have my prompt customized to show my username, what machine I'm on, the current path. And then I've set it up so that if you're in a Git repository, it shows you the branch that you're on. If you use Git, you might find that useful. Um, but we have downloaded these files. In particular, we've downloaded um, CalcPy MPI and CalcPy Serial. Now that we have this code we can play with, uh, let's go ahead and create um, a Slurm directory where we can try out some Slurm scripts. So I'm just going to make a directory here. And I'm going to create a directory called Slurm Examples. CD into that directory. And I'm going to copy um, these Python programs into that Slurm directory. Just to make things a little neater. All right, so here are our example programs. And we're going to need to install some libraries to get our um, test program to work. So first, I'm going to load the Miniconda environment uh, module. I'm going to create a new environment, Conda V, and let's call it CalcPy. And it's going to include the NumPy library and the MPI for Pi library. And again, this is just to get our example program working. Um, whatever programs you might run may already, uh, we may not need these supporting libraries, for example. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the commands I'm entering right now, take a look at the previous videos on, on creating Conda environments and on loading environment modules. All right, so now we can activate our environment. Um, and let's just quickly test our program here. We wouldn't normally ever run a computation on the head node, but this is going to be a very small test. Uh, we should be able to run the serial version of the program here. It takes one argument, which is the number of steps to use in calculating pi. Return, that worked. We won't be able to test the uh, MPI program until a little later. 
we need to load some more libraries for that. And since it uses many nodes, we won't be able to run it on the head node anyway. All right, so we are now set and can actually start writing our first Slurm batch submission script. I'm going to use the Emacs text editor. Uh, we have a lot of different text editors on our Carson machines. This is my favorite. You can use whatever text editor you like. And I'm going to call it um, calcpy.sh. All right, so now we have a new file. This is a shell script. So if you're familiar with shell scripts, you'll recognize that they all start with hash bang, bin, and then the name of the interpreter. We're always going to use bash uh, for these. And then every line after that that starts with sbatch is going to be an instruction to the scheduler. So recall that the scheduler decides how to take your computations and allocate them to different computational nodes and CPUs that you have available. All right, so the first directive we're going to give it is to give a name to our job. So let's just call it calcify. The next directive is going to be the email address to send notifications to. Email user. I'm going to put my email address. Of course, you would put in yours instead. And then we're going to tell it what kinds of notifications to send us um, with mail type. So for example, I might want to be emailed when the job begins, when it ends, if it fails, and if it's requeued. So hopefully begin, end, and fail are fairly obvious. The requeued command comes in if you're running a job, it started running, but then a higher priority job came in and the scheduler had to stop your job in order to run the higher priority job. And then when that higher priority job is finished, it will reschedule your job to run. It gets requeued. The time that might happen, and it's fairly rare, the time that might happen is if you're taking advantage of uh, a node that's been shared with the community by a lab or a, a grant PI, but that grant PI has priority access to their hardware. So you're running on it because they let you use it while it was idle. They want to use it now. Their job will um, stop your job until their job is finished, and then yours will be requeued. Most of the nodes at Carsey are not um, owned by a lab or a grant. They're free for everyone at UNM to use. And so that situation shouldn't come up if you're using those community nodes. However, if you are using uh, a node owned by someone else, it might be requeued, in which case I would want to know that it was requeued so that I could check to make sure that the job was started, uh, restarted correctly. All right. Or you can simply put all to get all these notifications. Since um, the job will be running on a compute node, and I will presumably be away from the computer, and I won't be able to see any output because the output is running on a different computer, we need to specify where that output's going to go. So this, this is the output that is written to screen, or would have been written to screen by your program. Um, it may be storing other output independently. But whatever is going to be saved to screen will be saved to a file specified by this dash dash output argument. Um, let's just call it calcpy out. And similarly, in the error output, we'll get saved to calcpy.error. Uh, if I don't specify these commands, um, it will just save this output to slurm dash and then the job ID that you were allocated. All right, so next we'd like to start telling the scheduler what resources we need. First one is we're going to ask for 10 minutes of time. Now, these uh, little example programs are going to take much shorter than that to run, um, but we're going to tell the scheduler we promise not to run for more than 10 minutes.
We're also going to ask for some memory. This is the amount of memory per compute node that will be allocated. So I'm going to ask for one gigabyte of memory per compute node. And I'm going to ask for some number of tasks. I'm going to ask for one task. Now, there's some complexity here um, between the use of processes and threads. If you're not uh, familiar with processes and threads, that's OK. Um, some of the things I talk about will assume that, that knowledge. But basically, it comes down to if you're running one program and you want to run on one CPU, then you will specify n tasks is, is one. If I had, if I wanted to run two copies of the program and get one CPU per copy, then I would ask for n tasks equals two. A lot of software though knows how to use multiple CPUs. It'll use more than one CPU. And to do that, we're gonna have to tell Slurm to allocate more than one CPU per program. And the way we'll do that is if I have one copy of the program I'm gonna run, but I know it knows how to use more than one CPU, I will say CPUs per task equals, for example, 16. So if there are 16 cores on the node I'm going to run on, and I know that my program knows how to use all the cores on the, on the um, node, then I'll say run one copy of it, but use 16 cores per program. If I were to say two, I would now run two copies of the program, each of which would try and get 16 CPUs to use. All right. But for our simple example, just to start off with, we just want one CPU and one copy of the program. All right. So that's the end of the instructions to our scheduler. Next comes instructions that we actually want to run, the commands we want to run on the compute nodes. We're not going to run the um, CalcPy program just yet. I want to get some output first so we can get some intuition about how this is working. All right, so echo is a program little command that just prints out some text. And I want to print out the names of the nodes we're running on. Say node list. I'm going to access a variable. This dollar sign means access a variable. Slurm provides a variable called Slurm job node list. That will give me um, the names of the nodes I'm running on. Now, we're only asking for one CPU, so we'll only get one node to run on the first. We'll get its name. Later on, we'll be running on multiple nodes. All right, so we also want to take a look at the number of tasks. That'll equal the tasks here. All right, now we're getting ready to, to run our script. But before we do that, let's take a look at the status of Xena. So each of these lines, when I type QGROC, shows a partition. A partition is a way of grouping compute nodes together. So in this partition, all the compute nodes that have one GPU are in this partition. All the compute nodes that have two GPUs are in the dual GPU partition. The nodes that have one terabyte of RAM are in this partition, and three terabytes of RAM are in this partition. So we might partition nodes up by the kinds of hardware they have or by who owns them. Um, but in general, we'll need to know what partition we want to send our programs to. Now, since I'm in the systems group, um, I have access to a test node here that I'm going to use to demonstrate these scripts. So let's edit that Slurm script again. And I'm going to specify the partition. I'm going to send this to the systems partition just so that I'm not using a production node um, for these examples. All right, 
So sbatch is the command we use to submit the script we just wrote to the Slurm scheduler. All right, and we get some feedback right away. The first thing I notice is we've been allocated a job ID. That's a good sign. There weren't any errors in our script. Secondly, it's telling us that by default, we're going to use project uh, 2016-199. Now, this is just for our reporting purposes that you can go to a website and you can look to see exactly how many CPU cycles, um, how many resources, how many jobs have been run under a particular project. And by default, it just picks one of the projects that you are a member of. If you're a member of multiple projects, you can set that manually by modifying this default Slurm account file or by adding a line to the Slurm script that will specify the account number you want to use. All right, so we ran a very simple program. I'm sure it's finished by now. And in fact, there's our calcpy.out that we specified. And there's calcpy.error in case there were some problems. Let's first take a look at calcpy out. And there's the output. Remember, we echoed node list and the name of the compute node we ran on. So Xena test is the name of the node that's in the systems partition. That's why it ran there. And just as we expected, we ran one task. So one copy of the program on one CPU. Let's check the um, error file to see if anything was in there. That file was empty, so we didn't have any errors. OK, so now let's move on to running our Calculate Pi program. Really, the whole purpose of that program is we can have it run as long as we want, and so we can take a look at job management tools. Let's edit our calcpy. .sh file again. Let's keep this output. I think it's useful to see um, what nodes we're running on. And we're going to put in those commands that you saw earlier, the ones that allow the, um, the, the calculate pi program to run. So module load miniconda three. Uh, activate the environment. And then finally running um, the program itself. And it took one argument, which was um, the accuracy of our of our pi calculation. Um, but really, the higher the number, the longer it's going to take for that uh, calculation to happen. So let's give it a really nice big number. This program was very fast, so it has to be a huge number for it to take any time. And now we're going to submit that job. All right, it was successfully submitted. I'm going to use the command sq to take a look at the status of the Xena um, scheduler. So I can see that a number of jobs are running. Here are the partitions they're running on. People are running on the big memory nodes, the single GPU nodes. Here's the username. And here's our job running. It's running on Xena test. It's been running for 10 seconds. The R indicates that it's running. It's not queued up. It would be a queue if it was waiting to run. And the name of the job. We can limit this display to just our jobs by doing dash u and then your username. So here's our job. Um, Slurm is very flexible in the information you can get out of commands like sq. Uh, though it's flexible, it's a little bit um, overwhelming sometimes. So I'm just going to show you a couple of useful commands. We say format. You can follow that with a series of pound characters followed by different letters. And depending on the letter we put in, we get different information. So for example, if I say pound A, um, 
that will show us, now we're restricted to our account again. That'll show us the, the job ID. So this is job ID 40816. I can do a dash B to show me which node it's running on. You can do a lowercase r, and that makes it explicit um, that the reason it's not running is none, because it is running. But if it were queued, it might tell you um, it's waiting for resources. Or if um, you'd ask for too many CPUs, more than there are in the partition, it would tell you there's a partition configuration error. And also, if it were not running, a dash S would tell you the start time, the estimated start time, or when it actually started. Uh, in Linux, man is the manual command. It'll give you a manual for a command. So if I type man, you can scroll down. And these are all the different options you can give that format command to get different kinds of information. Um, so for example, to get the time limit would be L. Um, time left would be capital L. So let's try those. All right, so it tells me that I've got five minutes, 50 seconds left out of the 10 minutes that I asked for. We can also run sinfo to get more general information about the status of the cluster itself. So sinfo tells me um, the time limits of the various partitions, so 48 hours on the partitions here. Uh, there are 20 nodes allocated, four nodes free on the single GPU queue, which is also the default queue, that's what the star means. There are four nodes um, free on the dual GPU partition. Um, so idle here means that none of the CPUs are being used. Mixed means that some of the CPUs are being used on the big memory one um, node in that big memory one terabyte partition. But the other one, big memory two, is idle right now. So this gives you a sense of where you can run your jobs and how um, soon they might start. Let's take a quick look at our running job. So it's still running, has a minute and, four, and uh, 28 left. But let's go ahead and end that job early. We're going to do that with scancel. So you just type scancel, the um, number of the job, and you can see it's now gone. All right, so let's try something where we're actually going to use more than one CPU. Um, to do that, we're going to uh, create a new file. I'm going to use our old calcpy sh as a starting point. I'm going to call it mpi. So um, if you're unfamiliar with MPI, um, that's OK. Many programs use MPI that are designed for high performance computing centers. And we have a tutorial video that explains what MPI is and how uh, we wrote um, our CalcPy MPI program. Um, but basically, it's going to use uh, lots of CPUs instead of just one in order to get a lot of speed up. All right, so let's reduce this a little bit. And this time, we're going to say, I want to run on 32 CPUs. Now, I know that there are 16 CPUs per Xena node, at least for the, um, the GPU nodes. So it's going to take two nodes to run this. And all I have to do is say srun and then the name of the command that I want to run. So srun is Slurm's program that understands how to run multiple cores, use multiple cores. And since I already specified how many tasks, srun will automatically figure out that I can use 32 
cores at once. So let's give this a try. I'm going to change the output path to MPI and the name. All right, it's been submitted. Let's take a look and see if it's running already. Yep, and you see it's been allocated two nodes. Ah, but here's a problem. I sent it to the systems partition, which only has one node. So let's go back to this command I showed you earlier. Now I can see that the reason it's not running is because of the partition configuration. Partition configuration doesn't have two nodes for the systems partition. Um, the start time is NA because it can't start, and the executing hosts is also not applicable. So let's fix that. This time I'm going to select a partition that has enough nodes for this job. For example, the single GPU partition. Um, by the way, I should mention that I'm running these examples on Xena because Xena right now is um, the only system set up with the Slurm scheduler we're going to use in the future. I would not normally ever submit jobs that don't use GPUs to the GPU queue, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, in the future, presumably you'll be running on either the new Taos cluster or on Wheeler, where um, where you can run jobs that don't need GPUs. And I'll show you in a minute how to allocate a GPU when running on Xeno with Slurm. All right. So let's go ahead and submit that to the to the single GPU um, partition, which has four nodes free right now. And let's take a look. Oh, so I'm going to cancel that job that um, required too many nodes. And it looks like our job that was running on Xena 18 has finished. There's our calc by MPI dot out. And here's the output of what we're studying to copies of our CalcPy program, each of which output the results. So we just saw um, S run run 32 copies of our CalcPy program. And for each one, we got an output and a time. It took about 1.2 seconds per instance. Um, so we got lots of repeated output, but no speed up. What we're going to do now is tell SRUN that that was an MPI program. And so it will spread the computation across 32 nodes, and it should take a much less time to calculate. So let's give that a try. So all we have to do to um, tell SRUN to use MPI is add dash MPI is PMI2. So PMI2 is the communication API, the communication libraries that MPI will use on on this particular cluster. All right, so this should spread the computation across 32 CPUs. Uh, we'll get a single output in one 30 second of the time, hopefully. So let's submit that. All right, it was submitted. Looks like it already finished. Let's take a look at the output. All 
right, so we have a single output, so a single um, combined instance of this program ran, and it only took 0 0.46 seconds instead of 1.24. So most of the commands that PBS provided are available um, in Slurm. One exception is that um, interactive jobs you'd normally do with Q sub dash I uh, do allocate a node. So here I run Q sub dash I, an allocated Xena O2, and I can now SSH to Xena O2. But this isn't quite um, the way that uh, it worked with PBS before. The Slurm way of getting an interactive node is to type srun um, dash dash pty dash. So what we're doing, we're running srun to um, run a program on the Slurm nodes. And then dash dash pty says run this interactive program. And we're going to run bash because bash is our shell. And now I'm automatically put on to Xena02. All right, so there's one last thing I want to show you. Xena is a GPU cluster, meaning a lot of the nodes have GPUs you can use. So you may be running software such as quantum chemistry software that can take advantage of GPUs, or especially machine learning algorithms make um, great use of GPUs. So I'll show you how to allocate a GPU. I've got a little program here um, that I wrote called Matmol. All it does is multiply matrices on the GPU, and we'll use that for, our, um, for a test program. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take our existing um, calcpy script, copy that, and we'll modify it to use GPUs. I'm just going to call it CUDA SH. CUDA is the language that I wrote this MapML program in. Modify CUDA SH. Um, change the name. And the output. So we're just using this uh, map matrix multiplication program to stress the GPU so we can see that it's using it. Uh, we don't care about the output particularly. We don't need um, to load um, modules. Um, we don't need um, to activate any environments. We're going to move to this Python program. All right, so we're just going to say matmol. First argument is the size of the matrix to be multiplied. And even a 10,000 by 10,000 matrix squared is going to require more than one gig of RAM. So I'm going to bump that, that up to uh, 10 gigs of RAM. We still just want one CPU, though, because the GPU will be doing all the work. And then just so it runs long enough that we can tell that it's running, um, we're going to have it repeat the multiplication um, 100,000 times. And let's go ahead and uh, run this on the single GPU queue. All right, so we can run sbatch cuda.sh. There it is running on Xena 11. And what I'm going to do is SSH to Xena 11. Since I've been allocated um, Xena 11, I can SSH to it. All right. Um, I can first of all run htop to see that the program is indeed running. And I can load a program called nvtop that will tell me how much of the GPU is being used. All right, so I can see that periodically it jumps up using 58% of the GPU 27%, 61%. And it gives me a little plot over time showing how much of um, the GPU is being used, the memory usage, etc. So I, I know for sure that it's allocated a GPU 
my matrix multiplication program is running on the GPU and everything's good. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. That's an overview of how to use Slurm on Xena. Um, as I said, we'll be moving to um, Slurm on our other clusters. So hopefully this will be useful for Wheeler and Taos and other upcoming um, Slurm clusters. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.